I began using social media around sophomore year of high school and was elated to explore a new world full of possible friends. MySpace.com was my social media drug of choice. I finally felt allowed to be my true, weird self. In 2010, I received a message from a girl who had great style and a colorful custom-coded profile just like mine. The message was simple and read, Hey, I like your style. I'm starting a group for cool girls and wanted to know if you wanted to be friends. I thought to myself, what a bold move, and immediately responded with, yes, let's meet in Soho next week. We clicked instantly and walked around chatting and discussing life in Brooklyn. We both came from similar upbringings and were the youngest of three children living in Caribbean households. Throughout our friendship, which is now approaching the 10 year mark, we've been each other's support systems. Being open within our friendship has led to my work with mental health awareness and the creation of Sad Girls Club, a space for women to speak freely about their mental health. Having someone who you can share your darkest moments is therapeutic. And the space to be open with myself through friendship has taught me the power of vulnerability. I always knew that I wanted to make an impact, and I thought I had it all figured out. I would become a nurse and make a difference in people's lives. After a few months, I realized that focus wasn't making me happy, and I began to explore other options. When I discovered computer programming, it was love at first sight. I loved the infinite number of ways technology could change one person's life, or even millions of lives. I finally felt excited, but when I got into the software engineering program in my school, I was intimidated by the fact that most of my classmates were boys who seemed like they knew what they were doing. I had to remind myself that I was just entering the field, learning how to walk when the boys already learned how to run. Thankfully, a teacher introduced me to Girls Who Code. Suddenly, I found myself learning new skills and more about myself than I ever thought I would. I found my voice and how to finally use technology to make an impact on people's lives. Most importantly, I found a family, a sisterhood, a bond that shared with all girls who love to code. Two years ago, my cousin and I were waiting in the drive through of a shawarma restaurant in Saudi Arabia. And while we were waiting for our food, we began talking about our aspirations and what we wanted to do in the future. I remember telling her I wanted to be the first female foreign minister of Saudi Arabia, and she wanted to be an engineer, both industries that were almost exclusively male-dominated. This was two years ago, before any of the changes in Saudi Arabia had happened, such as the driving ban being lifted and more women being encouraged to enter the work field. Our conversations were reflecting the obstacles that we'd have to face, not because we would not be qualified, but just because we were women. She might not remember this moment, but I will always remember what she said to support me. She said, you have to work twice as hard, but reaching your goal will be twice as sweet. At this moment, sisterhood seemed to be the most present. The simple dialogue strengthened our bond and made us feel both more empowered. I now realize, although it might not be as overt, sisterhood is in every micro-interaction I have with all the wonderful female figures in my life. I was born a storyteller. As an indigenous woman, I was raised amongst the stars. Bright lights billions of years formed into oral histories. Stories about my past, my present, my future. Stories about my family, our history. On why we bead, on why we fish, why the sun shines, why the birds sing. So I take in knowledge more readily, not in abstract presentations or during lectures of the right way, but when it is woven into a tapestry of experiences and stories by the people around me. My generation's experiences will be passed this way too. We will talk about how we built entire cities by stacking zeros and ones, how we used strings of letters to connect populations across land masses, of how I became a member of a sisterhood so strong that distance and physical presence were of no matter, and about how learning a simple skill and sharing that with others changed my own life so dramatically. In my childhood, my brother and I were always partners in playing video game. When we got older, I followed my interest in video game and pursued a bachelor degree in computer science from university. My brother, he worked with U.S. Special Forces and Afghan Commandos. When he came home, 
He would tell me stories about how brave the Afghan commandos were and about the dangers they faced. Around the same time, I discovered Kotun Spy, which gives girls in Afghanistan a chance to learn computer coding and game development. For our very first hackathon, we were tasked to address a problem in our community and present a solution. Inspired by one of my brother's stories, I decided to increase people's awareness of the bravery of our commandos. Together with my teammates, Hasino, Zakia, Nargis, Samiro, and me, we create the game fight against opium. In the game, Afghan soldiers destroy opium fields and grow saffron instead of opium. With the game, we hope to create cultural change in the attitudes, behaviors, and future of the region. Sisterhood in our team has enabled us to work together, have an exchange of thoughts, motivations, and also make the greatest change in our communities by helping one another. Our goal as the Afghan girls who code is to create games that serve and help our homeland to help build Afghanistan 2.0 by Afghan girls code. I wasn't sure I could be a mother. Then I found out I was pregnant and once Trinity was born and I saw her tiny cute face, I knew at that moment I'd always have her back. By three, Trinity told me she wasn't a boy, but a girl. At first, I wasn't sure what to do. And there were no stories about young trans kids out there. But when I saw her struggling to live with someone she never was, I knew it was time to prove exactly what I promised when I first held her. I promised to always have her back and love her no matter what. I'd always be there. Trinity and I have been a team, which is our version of sisterhood. But I have to say it's Trinity's mom. She's my community and my heart and makes me laugh a lot. And I work hard to be her community and advocate. For us, being a sisterhood means we can now uplift others with our story. I can share what it has been like and continues to be like as mom to a trans child. And I can share my story of being a happy and thriving black trans girl. Being a sisterhood means facing our fears together and living life with love, affirmation, and togetherness. Always a sisterhood. Oh, <laughs> say it together. <laughs> we say this part together. Always a sisterhood. <laughs>